Luckily, C has arrays. Even though C is, of course, a low-level language, it does have at least the concept of arrays built in. And very much probably, you are already familiar with the square bracket notation for declaring and using arrays. Now, many times you're gonna hear something like that. Arrays are just syntactic sugar in C. Hmm quite a statement. I understand the point. I think this is a good mental model to understand arrays. But let's dig a little and let's find the truth. It simply means making a certain functionality easier to use. But this doesn't provide any new feature, any new functionality. It's simply a simpler way to do things. Simple example, the plus plus or minus minus increment or decrement operators. This is not a new functionality. It just makes stuff easier, faster, more readable, sugary, if you want. Another example is the compound assignment. You got the point, right? Another example is array indexing. For example, here we have an array, you can see from the square bracket. An array square bracket 2 is just syntactic sugar for star braces array plus 2. So square bracket notation equal pointer to referencing. And this is the murky place where misconceptions about arrays and pointers duality emerge. So back to the question, are arrays in C a syntactic sugar for pointers? Well, we just saw that array subscript access is identical to pointer access with the dereference operator. But this by no means should give you the impression that arrays are pointers. Now, given that this is just an introduction to arrays, I want you to have in the background of your mind this sentence arrays are arrays and pointers are pointers they are different things so why this line in the book well for many practical purposes in c code arrays behave exactly like pointers for a phenomenon called array decay we will see about that but arrays are not pointers so are not exactly syntactic sugar for pointers as a mental model it works very well you can think of arrays as pointers. But if you want the pedantic explanation, this is not true. So, TLDR, for any practical purpose, this mental model is very good. When you have an array, you can think of that as a pointer. But this is not pedantically totally correct. I want an array of integers. How do I do that? Well, I simply write int, which is the type, then the actual array identifier, the array name, I can call it r, and then the square brackets. This is the notation for arrays. Then the actual size of the array, let's say three, an array of three integers, semicolon. Of course, inside this pot in main memory, we have garbage values. So we need to assign some values. To do that, I'm gonna simply say R square bracket to index inside memory at position zero. And when we're gonna talk about the duality of pointers and array, you will see that this makes a lot of sense. So what is the value that I want at position zero? Well, let's say the number 42. In the same vibe array in position one is equal to 1337. And array in position two is equal to minus 21. Like that. Boom, done. So here we have an array with three integers. Now, what if I want to see the actual values inside the array? Well, with a simple for loop. In this fashion, we're going to loop three times. Every time you're going to index the array in position i and we will see that we get the actual numbers. Now, you've seen that I've used the size of the array. Now, when you declare an array, you have to give it a size. And it, that's what happened here, right? Array size three. And the size of the array has to be fixed. Of course, this is not the full story. We have something called VLA, variable length arrays, but maybe another time. How to get the length of an array in C? Well, my friend, you can't, ish. What do I mean by that? Well, the thing is that C doesn't record this information you have to manage it separately in another variable. When I say can't, I actually mean there are some circumstances when you can. And circumstances is the word, my friend. So there is a trick to get the number of elements in an array in the scope in which an array is declared. This is very important. But generally speaking, this won't work the way you want if you pass the array to a function. That's the weirdness, the spookiness about arrays, that when you pass them to functions, they're gonna decay into points. So let's change a little bit this code and let's check the size of this array. So printf zu for size t and we write size of array, like that. I recall to you that size of is just an operator in C. This is not a function. And when you don't have a specific type, like for example, int, float, whatever, you can omit the actual parentheses. And let's run it, we get 12. What is this 12, my friend? Well, my friend, this is just the size of the total array in bytes. So how do I get the actual number of elements? 
that's pretty simple, right? You just do size of array divided size of int, right? It's curious to see that with types, you need parentheses with the size operator. Anyway, I get three. You see the trick, my friend. It's very, very simple to derive the number of elements inside an array with the size of operator. Now let's understand why I need the array to be in my scope to do this trick. Let's create a simple function that is gonna return me the number of elements inside my array. So I use size t, the function is gonna be count elements and it's gonna take as an input an array int. So int array is gonna be array three in this fashion. So I'm gonna simply return exactly this, right? The same thing. And here, this time I'm gonna use count elements passing arrays as an input. As you can see, I get a warning. The compiler is smart enough to tell me that these will return me a size of an int star, you see? And the result I'm gonna get is true. What is going on? Bizarre, right? Let's try to change a little bit the code. Here I'm gonna do an array of 42 elements. A pretty big boy. Here I have to change array three, array 42. Let's do the same compilation as before. Let's launch and I still get true. If I do the previous printf with size of array divided size of int, what I will get is of course 42 elements, but the function is gonna return me back two. This is because when you pass arrays to functions, you're only passing a pointer to the first element and that's what size of measures. So here, this array is a pointer to an integer. A pointer is eight bytes, so I get eight divided by four which is exactly true. Array initializers. You can initialize an array with constants ahead of time. Sending a value for every spot in memory is super tedious. A better way is just to initialize this array. What do I mean? Well, we simply use the curly braces and we say 42, 1337, minus 21. This is exactly the same thing. Behind the scenes, you have the compiler that is performing this code exactly like the code I wrote. Let's test this code and of course we're gonna get the correct result. Now one important thing is that you can do initialization only when you declare the array. Let me explain. If I do this it doesn't work. So initialization works only at the level of the declaration of the array. This is pretty important. Now let's have a cleaner code. Here I just use a macro size and this is gonna be the size of the actual array. Let's do five and here I write size as well as in the for loop. Very good. Now every time I change this the code is going to be refactored everywhere. So here I have my initialization of the first three numbers. What is going to happen to the fourth and fifth number? Well they're going to be zero. Indeed if you have fewer items in your initializer than there is room for the array the remaining elements in the array will be automatically initialized with zero. So rule, if you have an initializer, anything not explicitly set to a value will be set to zero. So this is the same as this. Now, if you have a very big array, let's say of 100 elements, and you want everything to be set to zero, write zero here. And as you can see, I get all zeros in my array. Now, there is also a very cool way. For example, let's say I want the fifth element, so I can do square five, equal to 42 in this fashion. And if I launch, you see that I get only the fifth element with the value 42 and all the rest with zeros. Now let's try to do something weird. I want to see all the numbers which are in my array, but the limit is not gonna be the size, which is five, right? It's gonna be the size per two. I compile the code and if I launch, you can see that I have my array here. My real array is only these five elements, but I can actually write more or numbers, of course. I can find gibberish, but it works. Indeed, C doesn't stop you from accessing arrays out of bounds. Well, turns out that printing of the end of an array results in what C developers call undefined behavior, the magic word. It basically means you've done something bad. Basically, the compiler is allowed to emit code that does anything, undefined behavior. You don't know what is going to happen. Worst case scenario, you have a crash. 